to. I was always going to be a biology or chemistry major. And when, when you're in college, you uh, mixed with the uh, big biology courses and chemistry courses with pre-meds. And, and I just had close friends that were pre-meds, and that's how you started getting interested in it. But I, I think I, when I really went to college, I really wanted to be a chemist. That, that was my big interest. It really wasn't medicine, but it grows on you, and biology grows on you. It's a gradual process. It wasn't something that I wasn't an eight-year-old kid wanting to dream of being a doctor. That was, that was it. My best course in high school was chemistry, and I, and I was crazy about my chemistry teacher. He just taught me so much. So I guess you could say that I just eased into medicine as a byproduct of biology and chemistry. If I had to tell you how this whole story begins, it's quite simple. Fever, infection, fever, what's that molecule, what does it do? I was a first year medical school student at Yale in 1965. The field had actually developed into what was this fever molecule. Um, and so I did my, my medical school thesis at Yale on, on this molecule. Then when I went to the NIH, I was determined uh, to purify this molecule and, and essentially um, become a protein chemist. Um, and that was 1971. And I was really, um, I, I bit off too much. Uh, it was just an enormously difficult project. Um, in retrospect, it took sev seven years to purify this fever molecule. What happens next is the molecules are studied and cloned and people start to get into the nitty gritty of what these molecules do and they find out that they cause a lot of disease, serious disease, not just talking about fever and infection, but diseases of the kidney, heart disease, a variety of, of autoimmune diseases and inf inflammatory diseases, in some cases are even fatal. The impact today is kind of considerable. There are millions of people who some way or another are blocking a cytokine to treat a disease that is the chronic inflammation or acute inflammation. The part of the work I most enjoy to this day is looking at data. I just love to see data, results of experiments, whether they work or not, try to understand what happened. I still like to work at the bench myself. I like to design experiments with my, my colleagues, my friends, and things of that nature. I like to write papers about what we find. I was very lucky. I had great mentors. The saddest thing for me these days is to look back and see how my mentors and the people who were the pioneers in this field when I was young didn't live long enough to see it. And I can identify one person was Phyllis Bodell. She was an br incredibly brilliant young woman one of the first women professors at Yale who taught me just about everything in the lab. And Elisha Mac Atkins was my thesis advisor at Yale. And then I had my greatest mentor, Sheldon Wolf. He was a giant, and, and, um, and I stayed with him until the day he died, and then I moved to Colorado. Um, these were great people, and the sad thing, as I said, is that they didn't live long enough to see the cytokine field mushroom into what it is today. Young people, follow your heart, not your brain. Do what you really like to do the most. If you like to play around in the lab with test tubes, do it. If you like to play with injecting animals and seeing what happens to them, do it. If you like computers and doing analysis of, of genes, do it. Whatever makes you happy in your heart. In science and technology, it's just exploding, like the universe exploded. Just, just endless new information. So it's harder to be a good scientist because you have to deal with a huge amount of, inf of information. Um, but if you really like it, that information can lead you into new areas that no one ever dreamed of before. My mother was a big opera fan and she would make us sit around the radio on Saturday afternoons listening to the Texaco Metropolitan Opera broadcast on the radio. And, um, and I and I had to take singing lessons and piano lessons. And yes, and I, I did want to become an opera singer. Um, and I did sing in the Boston Symphony Chorus for 12 years. And I, in medical school at Yale, I sang in the, in the cho chapel choirs for which I was paid. Um, a fairly good voice, but not a great voice. And my father once said to me that I would starve to death if I stayed in, in opera and I, sh I should go back to science and medicine. 
My favorite opera varies every month, so <laughs> right now I'm, I'm listening to Verdi's Don Carlo with Filippo II and um, the Grand Inquisitor. It's a great opera.